All right, our next trend is going to be looking at ionization energy. Ionization energy is defined as the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom or an ion. Again, to figure out this periodic trend, let's think about the electrostatic force. So if you have a stronger electrostatic force, that means the nucleus is holding on to its valence electrons more tightly. In that case, that means you need more energy to remove electrons. So we can see that the electrostatic force is directly proportional to the ionization energy. So to think about the periodic trend, we know that as you go from left to right across the periodic table, the electrostatic force increases. Since the nucleus is holding on to its valence electrons more tightly, we need more energy to remove electrons. So as we go from left to right, we have an increase in the ionization energy due to an increase in the electrostatic force. Now, when we go down a column, we know that the electrostatic force decreases. This means that the nucleus is holding on to its valence electrons less tightly, so less energy is required to remove those electrons. So we have a decrease in the ionization energy due to a decrease in the electrostatic force. All right. Now, this trend is referring to the first ionization energy, removing the first electron from a neutral atom. Sometimes the MCAT's going to ask you about the removal of a second electron or a third electron. And removing these electrons is going to require a different amount of energy as the first electron. This is looking at a topic called subsequent ionization energies. And what you need to know is when you remove an electron, what you're leaving behind is more positive than what you started with. And since electrons like positive things, removing a second electron is going to be harder. And subsequently, removal of the third electron is going to be even harder. So that means removing subsequent electrons always requires more energy. Another way of thinking about that is the first ionization energy is always the smallest. You're going to require more energy to remove a second electron and even more energy to remove a third electron, and so forth. All right, so to illustrate this, let's take a look at a few examples. So let's say we're looking at the ionization energy of sodium. So this would be looking at the first ionization energy because sodium is a neutral atom, and neutral sodium has a first ionization energy of 496 kilojoules per mole. Let's now consider the second ionization energy. This would be removing an electron from Na+, sodium cation. And the second ionization energy we're going to see is 4,563 kilojoules per mole. We can see that the second ionization energy is larger than the first ionization energy, and that makes sense because we said that the second ionization energy has to always be greater than the first. So let's consider another example, magnesium. Now, if we look at the first ionization energy of magnesium, we should be able to make a prediction. And that's because on the periodic table, magnesium is to the right of sodium. And based on the periodic trend, we know that as you go from left to right, the ionization energy increases. So you should be able to predict that magnesium has a greater ionization energy than sodium. And that indeed is the case. The first ionization energy of magnesium is 737 kilojoules per mole, greater than that of sodium. So now let's take a look at the second ionization energy of magnesium. Removing an electron from Mg+, this is going to have a second, ion second ionization energy value of 1,450 kilojoules per mole. This matches our description before, that as you go from the first to the second ionization energy, it increases. However, one thing you might have noticed, which is a bit odd, is that for sodium, you went from about 500 to about 4,500 you went up by 4,000 kilojoules per mole. Here for magnesium, from the first to the second, we went from 700 to 1,400. 
we only went up by 700 kilojoules per mole. However, if we take a look at the third ionization energy for magnesium, removing an electron from Mg2+, we're going to see that this third ionization energy is going to have a value of 7,731 kilojoules per mole. So now we can see this big jump. It's between the second ionization energy and the third ionization energy. And one thing we do want to understand is why for sodium was there a big gap between the first and second ionization energy, whereas for magnesium, the big gap was between the second and the third ionization energy. And this can be explained looking at a topic we've discussed previously, which is electron configurations. So if we take a look at the electron configuration for sodium, we can use noble gas notation, and that's going to give us helium 2s1. Na plus, you lose an electron, so it's going to be helium. Magnesium is just to the right of sodium, so it's going to be helium 2s2. And you'll have helium 2s1 and then helium. What you should be able to appreciate here is that the ionization energy is going to take some value when you're removing an electron from a valence shell that is not full. Right? In this case, the second shell can have a total of eight electrons. So having just one or two electrons is nowhere close to a full shell. So it will require energy, but without a full shell, you don't have a ton of stability. So what you can actually see is that when you remove an electron from sodium, you now have noble gas configuration. You have a full shell. This is very stable, so it's going to require a lot of energy to remove an electron from. Similarly, for magnesium, you can remove the first two electrons. That's not part of a full shell. But again, once you get to noble gas configuration and you have a full shell, you can expect a large jump in the ionization energies. So this is important for you to keep in mind, basically, that subsequent ionization energies increase substantially when removing an electron from a full shell. So subsequent IE increases substantially when removing an electron from a full shell. And this actually allows you to make some predictions. For all elements in the first column are alkali metals, the first ionization energy is going to have some value, but the second ionization energy is going to have a large jump. For our group two elements, our alkaline earth metals, the first ionization energy is going to have some value, the second ionization energy is going to be slightly higher, but the third ionization energy is going to be substantially larger.